Hey, Emmanuel. Welcome to our first ever debut online worship service. Now, today's service will be something a little different. And our online services won't be all of them exactly like this one here. But I first of all want to give a huge shout out to our deacons who contacted by phone or email all of the Emmanuel parishes to get the word out about this service and all that's going on. Um, I also want to give props, uh, definitely in order, uh, to Abby Tittle, who helped produce and edit Emmanuel's first online worship service. Thank you, Abby. Now, be sure to remember to download or view on your screen the online worship bulletin so that you can really enter in and participate and follow along the service that you're um, about to enjoy. You can even pause the video right now if you need to get it. We also have a downloadable Bible study that was in the Community Life section and also on our website to accompany this sermon for further study um, throughout the week. You can do that either individually or with your family or with a small group of people. Now, the goal of this service is to help you to um, realize that worship is something that not just takes place in the sanctuary, but it can take place in all aspects of life, in our work, outdoors, in the home, wherever you find yourself. And so we're going to be doing this service also in different parts of the church campus to give you a connection um, to our church facilities that all of us have been fasting for during this precautionary period for the coronavirus. Well, let's worship the living God together, Emmanuel. Enjoy now the prelude to our worship. <laughs> Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. So keep us both outwardly in our body and inwardly in our soul, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, our God, forevermore. Amen. 
please join me in the call to worship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
now to our time of confession. Confession is important because it reminds us of our mortality. We have been realizing, especially these days, just our own fragility individually, even as a society, as a human race. We're reminded that we're not God and God is God. And so we remember that our Lord Jesus Christ, he's able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. In every respect, he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. So let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we might receive mercy and find grace in help in a time of need. So let us now confess our sins to Almighty God together. Most merciful God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was tempted in every way, yet was without sin, we confess before you our own sinfulness. We have hungered after that which does not satisfy. We have compromised with evil. We have doubted your power to protect us. Forgive our lack of faith. Have mercy on our weakness. Restore in us such trust and love that we may walk in your ways and delight in doing your will. Amen. Let's go before Almighty God in the silence of our own hearts over these next few moments. Amen. Hear the good news. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In Christ Jesus we are forgiven. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. so that I'm not alone. Thank you for coming, Phoebe. I see you brought something today. What did you bring? Uh, it's my book, The Land of Stories. Oh, and that must be something really important to you. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Would you give it to me if you yeah. knew you could never have it again? No. You'll, you wouldn't give it to me? That's really a hard thing, right? To give up something that we love and that we care about. That's called sacrifice. And, and what's interesting is that God would never have you give something up if he didn't have something really great in store for us. And a lot of you have given up your spring break, right? And you've given up maybe playing outside and doing all the really cool, fun things we like to do because of all that that's going on right now. You know, in the Bible, Pilate met with Jesus and he asked him all these questions, hoping that Jesus might defend himself. And Jesus never did, because he knew that God had a great plan. Jesus knew that God had something really cool in store, something good on the other side. And he trusted God. And so Jesus was the biggest sacrifice. He gave the biggest sacrifice. And so as you go through these times, just remember that God has something good in store for us. And have hope that that's on the other side. Okay, let's pray together. Let's hold hands. That'll be, oh wait. <laughs> Jesus, you, Jesus, you sacrifice so much for us. Sacrifice so much for us. Thank you. Thank you. Help us to have hope. Help us to have hope. And to trust in you. And to trust in you. Amen.
It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty world, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Let us pray. Send your spirit among us, O God, as we meditate on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Prepare our minds to hear your word. Move our hearts to accept what we hear and purify our will to obey in joy and faith. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, last Sunday we saw the extreme social distancing that Jesus experienced with the disciples. All of his friends had either turned on him or turned away from him. Jesus was all alone, friendless and God forsaken. He understands quite well those times that we feel maybe isolated from others or cut off from God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus wrestled with God, but finally yielded to God praying the ultimate prayer of faith, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And then after Judas's kiss and betrayal, Jesus was taken away by the religious leaders and the mob. The Sanhedrin questioned Jesus and accused him of blasphemy. Then they prepared their case to present before Pontius Pilate in the morning. Now in Roman law, legal cases were heard just after sunrise. So let's hear now from the word of the Lord, from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then they answered him, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. We've been hearing a lot about hand washing these days, that it's one of the best ways to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Scrub for 20 seconds with soap. The water temperature doesn't matter, it could be hot or cold. The average amount of time that people wash their hands is six seconds. So let's step it up a notch or two, people. Use a circular scrubbing motion, first with the palms, Next, with the back of the hands. Then scrub the inside of your fingers. Don't forget those fingernails. 
Now, it's the combination of soap and water that releases and rinses the grip of germs on your hands, and down the drain they go. Remember to fully dry off your hands, too. Germs are less apt to stick to dry hands. You see, hand washing is a way to take responsibility, to own your own germs, and then do away with them. Proper hand washing works, and it makes a difference. But there's also a very different kind of hand washing that doesn't do the job in our passage. We just heard Mark's account of Jesus before Pilate. But in Matthew's account, we read about a whole different kind of hand washing that didn't clean Pilate's hands of his wrongdoing. Matthew says, when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Instead of taking responsibility, Pilate avoided responsibility. He thought that he could wash his hands of the matter of Jesus. See to it yourselves. He wasn't going to get involved. Now, Marcus Pontius Pilate is a fascinating historical character. He was the Roman prefect or governor of Judea for 10 years, from AD 26 to 36, while Tiberius was the emperor of Rome. Now, Pilate made it into Christianity's two most famous creeds, the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. But Pilate was certainly no angel. Philo described Pilate this way, as inflexible, merciless, and obstinate. In Roman-occupied Palestine, Pilate offended the religious sensibilities of the Jewish people when he plastered images of the Roman emperor throughout the holy city of Jerusalem. He also had coins minted that were embossed with pagan religious symbols. Eusebius, the early church historian, wrote that Pilate himself eventually had to stand trial before the emperor Caligula for cruelty and oppression, namely for executing men without due process. Now the Jewish religious leaders, they in their own council, tried Jesus for blasphemy, saying that he claimed to be the Messiah. But they handed Jesus over to Pilate on very different charges, charges of high treason against Rome. They knew Rome didn't care at all about Jewish religious matters, but charges of treason definitely got their interest. When the Sanhedrin called Jesus King of the Jews, it was a code word that Rome definitely understood. You see, King of the Jews was a way of saying that Jesus was a freedom fighter, a leader of a political resistance against Rome. And so the religious leaders wanted Jesus dead. But by Roman law, they could do nothing. It was only Rome that had the right of the sword to carry out the death penalty. Now, Pilate questioned Jesus about the charges. Are you the king of the Jews? You say so, said Jesus. Now, his answer was very ambivalent. It was neither a denial nor an affirmation. Jesus couldn't say yes because it would be an admission that he was a political revolutionary, which he wasn't. But at the same time, Jesus was a king, a very different kind of king, the anointed one, the Messiah, the son of David, for a kingdom not of this world, the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of Rome. You see, Jesus' you say so put the ball back into Pilate's court, and it puts the ball back into our court. Aren't you going to answer? Listen to all their accusations. And all there was was silence. Pilate marveled at Jesus' silence. The, the same word marvel, it was used for the way that people marveled at Jesus' miracles. Most men begged and pleaded Pilate for clemency, but not Jesus. The silence of Jesus was a solemn and dignified silence 
of a man who had embraced God's will that he suffer and die. Now, it was Pilate's custom to release one prisoner that the crowds asked for each Passover. You see, Israel was delivered from Egypt on Passover. And so now, one prisoner would be delivered each Passover by Pilate. It was not only a way for him to placate the people, but to seem almost godlike to them. To manage rather than to lead. Do you want me to set free Barabbas or Jesus? In other words, I'm not taking initiative here. You tell me what to do. You see, Pilate was also playing some power games with the Jewish leaders. He knew Jesus was innocent. And he knew that the Sanhedrin was trying to frame Jesus. Pilate didn't want to do the bidding of the religious elite. But Pilate wanted others to say no for him. Maybe the crowds would set the innocent man free because he certainly didn't want to pay the political price for doing that. But the crowds didn't set Jesus free. They chose Barabbas instead of Jesus. You see, Barabbas was in prison for murder and sedition. His name is interesting. Bar-Abbas, which means son of of Abba, which we talked about last week, or son of father. What do you want me to do with the king of the Jews, asked Pilate. Do you want son of father or Jesus, the son of God, released? Do you want the guilty one released or the innocent one released? We want Barabbas, crucify Jesus. But what evil has he done? Crucify him. You see, Pilate was a politician. He was anxious to please the crowd. You see, it was all about self-preservation. He wanted to keep order and to keep his personal power. Pilate yielded to the popular cry, not to his conscience. He declared Jesus not guilty, yet he still convicted him. You see, the power that Pilate had, that was given to him by God, and he misused his God-given authority. But yet, at the same time, God was still firmly in control. God used Pilate to ensure that the righteous man, Jesus, would die in the place of an unrighteous man, Barabbas, that his innocent son would die for a guilty world. And so Pilate reminds us, in our lives, don't pass the buck. Follow God's leading. Listen to your heart. Hear that still, small voice. Do what needs to be done, even if it's unpopular and costly. And so, Emmanuel, what will we do with Jesus this Lent? Jesus washed feet on Monday, Thursday. So must we but we can't wash our hands of Jesus. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in the book of Galatians. Am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And so the innocent one died and the guilty one was set free. Jesus died for Barabbas. We are Barabbas. Jesus took on himself the punishment that we deserved. And so as he heard that guilty verdict, Jesus was both silent and innocent. Quite possibly, Pilate then uttered the legal words to Jesus, Abi in crucem, I consign you to the cross. The worst punishment for high treason in Rome was crucifixion. And so Jesus, the word made flesh, who holds together the universe, willingly put himself under Pontius Pilate. As theologian Karl Barth once said, God came into our world in its utter unloveliness and frightfulness. He entered into it all. We are not left alone in this frightful and alien land. Emmanuel, 
Jesus is right there with us. Jesus is right here with us. In the pain, in the uncertainty, the challenges, even in the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus is here. Amen. Let's now affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
high and every low. Oh no, never let go, Lord, never let go of me. Oh Lord, never let go of me. Oh Lord, you never let go of me. We now will use these moments in our worship together to dedicate our offerings and our gifts to God. Now, there will be an economic impact on many of us during this season that we find ourselves in, of the coronavirus, including the church. Emmanuel, your giving is appreciated and it is so important. Um, originally, we thought 10%, but it's um, actually probably over 20% of our giving is collected in person on Sundays. And because we're not gonna be meeting physically for a number of weeks, it's important to continue to help Emmanuel by your ongoing giving. We're gonna be very wise and very frugal in our spending in this unusual season that we find ourselves in. And we're gonna keep tabs on this and continue to make appropriate adjustments in our budget as needed. So please continue your giving, it's so appreciated either through mailing it into the church via snail mail or signing up for online giving on our website. So Emmanuel, let's continue to discover and to display Christ. Maybe not in here right now, but we can keep doing it out there. So let's keep the prayers going, prayers for our church, prayers for our country, for our leaders, prayers over our doctors and our nurses, our researchers, and the whole world. So now let's enjoy our offertory music. offered his life for us to remove our dreadful curse 
as you draw us into this renewing relationship of love, may we respond with gratitude as we offer the substance of our souls to continue with the ministry of Christ. For his name and glory, we pray and present our gifts. Amen. Hey, Emmanuel, for our moment of mission, I want to share about some opportunities before us. Sure, we have challenges that are going on and we want to uh, use precaution and wisdom, but this is a time for us also to see it as an opportunity to reach out. First of all, to show love to our neighbors um, by thinking of them, getting in touch with them through calls, through emails, uh, through uh, snail mail, and to just be thinking of one another and caring for each other in such a time as this. Also, you can help out. Um, you can call the church office to kate at emmanuelpc.org. And if you are um, healthy and maybe in a younger demographic uh, where you could be available to uh, help bring uh, food or medications uh, to members or others uh, who are unable to leave their home. Or maybe you yourself um, aren't able to leave your home. Call the church and we want to be able to help you out for the time that we find ourselves in. Also, this is a moment for mission for us, Emmanuel. As we're stepping out with this online worship service, we're going to do this throughout this precautionary period. But we also want to have this as an opportunity to open up new doors of seeing the internet as a way that we can extend our reach and our ability to um, uh, discover and display Christ uh, to our world and to our city. So let's stay open, let's be led by the Holy Spirit and see these opportunities before us as a way to extend the love of Christ to everyone we encounter. Thanks so much. I'm gonna move into a prayer of the people Please join me with the refrain. Lord, we come to you as a church broken by sin, divided by factions. We come weak in our mission, failing in holiness. We come neglectful in our prayers and insensitive to your presence. We come lacking in vision, wavering in faith. Lord, broken on the cross, we come to you. Only you. We come with people broken by war, divided by fear, shattered and separated, fractured by the unknown and constant changing. Lord, broken on the cross, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. Lord, we come with broken hopes and broken dreams, broken relationships and broken hearts. We come as shattered people, a debilitated community. Lord, broken on the cross, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. We come with all your broken people, broken in spirit with the despondent and the despairing. We come with the broken in mind, the deeply distressed and disturbed. We, as broken in body with all who are injured and all who are ill, we come to you with all of our needs. Lord, broken on the cross, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
of shelter in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no evil for evil. Help the suffering. Honor all. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you now and always. And all God's people said, Amen. Hey, Grace. It's good to have you. Thank you. So good to see you. Hey, John. Air hey, hug, Chris. Awesome. Okay, great to see you. Have an awesome week. Emmanuel, thank you. It was an honor to be able to worship with you today. And we pray blessings and protection over you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the internet hood.